Hey guys, welcome back, and remember, hold the line on those reserve list cards. Let's have a discussion, it's coming up next. Hey guys, welcome back, MTG Moxman here. If you're new to the channel and you somehow found me out there in YouTube land, thanks a lot for checking out my content today. Today's our Market Watch Friday. We're checking out the reserve list. We're gonna hold the line, okay? Gonna tell you guys not to sell any of these cards, that's for sure. Now, with the reserve list changing so fast and moving along at such a quick pace, it just shows that if the lower end reserve list cards are moving and they start pushing, picture like a domino falling over. As the lower end cards fall, it's falling onto the medium cards, which falls onto the high end cards. So now we're finally seeing adjustment in prices in the high end cards that are in the reserve list, the power nine. We're going to cover all these today. Now, even if you don't own these cards, which I understand a lot of us don't, it is fascinating to see the amount of sales, the amount of money being pumped into these reserve list cards. And I really do not believe anyone who purchases at these levels is going to put it back on the market unless they're desperate to sell. So most of these people are going to hold on to these cards and it just shows what the shortage will be like. Now I have a few little anecdotes for some of these, so it's interesting. The first one, we're going to talk Time Spiral. Last week we discussed this card, no, week before last we discussed it, how Time Spiral was sold out. I couldn't even find a listing. Well, it is what I call a restock now. People who have extra copies have put them up on the market because it's selling well. This card used to be around the $140 level. That's like $110 US. And now we're seeing it at the $240 Canadian or the $200, $190 uh, US price. Now, I am seeing quite a few of these for sale now, so it has restocked. I myself did not own this card. I've worked out a deal with someone for some cash and for some trade to buy it. But I was watching it at 140 and I still paid over 200 now for a near mint copy. So pretty crazy to see, guys, but that's where things are headed. Even these lower mid-level tier cards are going through the roof. And it's an excellent card. I mean, you untap six lands. It's awesome. It's using a lot of decks. I need it for my commander. Now, our next one up here, of course, is Tabernacle at Pendrel Vale. Now, I love this card. And I have a little story to go with this one. When I was a teenager... I guess that was 1994, I, back in June when Legends came out, we were lined up outside of our local store to buy. Uh, I was like third in line with a couple of friends. And the store owner only let us buy two packs. There was a limit of two packs for everyone. And then you could buy something else later on if there was any leftover. So in one of my packs, I did get a Tabernacle Pendreville, but I thought it was worthless. I hated it. I'm like, this is a junk card. I don't want to kill my own creatures off with, with upkeep costs. Well, I wasn't thinking. I was a teenager. I look back and go, because I traded away, I think, for a couple of Benelish heroes. I know. Horrible stuff. But look at the prices now. 5000 3000 I think that Italian copy you're sitting there is like 1600 bucks, but it's all beat up anyway. But look at those prices, and you see how these cards have pushed up over the years from 50 bucks to 100 bucks, And now, you know, this means that the card like I bought, that Pendrel Mist card, that's going to etch up, which has been happening. It's leaning on these really high-end originals, just causing them to go through the roof. And again, anyone who buys at five, dollars $6,000, they're probably not putting that back on the market, right? It's going to a collection, which leads to a shortage in these cards, which again, is like a self-fulfilling prophecy. When you see a YouTuber like Rudy at Alpha Investments say, hey, go get this card, or this is your last chance, if even 1% do it, look what happens. I'm telling you, that fear of missing out. All right, now our next one, of course, is Wheel of Fortune. We've been discussing this one for about four weeks. Now, Wheel of Fortune, it did have a slowdown on sales, but the sales are picking up again. When a couple people put near mint copies up, they were gobbled up right away for around that $575 price. A beat up copy you see there for like 204, but I had import and shipping fees, almost $300. And then of course, what I find awesome is the judge promo there at $1,900 Canadian, that's like $1,500 US. That is insane to see. Pardon me, there's like a little message here popping up. I'll take care of that. It is nuts to see that this is where our prices are headed and it just blows my mind. It's very interesting, it's very fascinating to see a card they shouldn't have reprinted in the Judge promo anyway is now at those levels. It just shows the rarity of what people are seeing in the marketplace, crazy. Now our next one up is gonna be Volrosh Stronghold. Now the ones you're seeing for sale here are actually not English. German, Japanese, people are, I just want to comment on this card because Volrosh has gone up quite a bit. I myself just had my copy come in, in the mail and I will discuss that on a Saturday vetting video where I'm going to show how to look over your cards to make sure that they're, they're 
real, no problems. See if the description matches what they sold you on eBay and what to do about it. We'll have a video for that and that'll come out tomorrow on Saturday. Uh, Pre-recorded, but I'll still answer comments, don't worry. Um, so when you see these cards already etching up to that price, uh, the only English copy there is a moderately played for 112. The other ones there are Japanese and German. And the other English copies I found started going to the 140, 160 mark. I'm expecting this card to settle in at around $200 um, in the next like 60 to 90 days. So we'll see if that prophecy comes true. But I'm thinking around there based on what I'm seeing from the sales. Very decent card. But it just shows some people are saying forget paying double the money. I'll just get a foreign copy so at least I have a real one. Which is awesome. Still smart to do. Play within your market space of how much money you can afford. Now, Moxes. Power 9. When you see a mox like this going for 6,000, these are all from the same seller. 6,000, 6,000, you know, 5,000, they're all 6,000. That's eighteen to $20,000 right there. All from the same seller. They all sold in the same day. There was numerous sales around the six to 7,000 and a couple of the three and 4,000. Guys, moxes are moving. When moxes are moving, you know they don't usually go back out into the market. Usually some of the high-end kind of um, Kid Icaruses and... and Dan Bach people out there have these on their stock shelves. But now that they're leaving those shelves, I've seen even those sellers start to jack their prices up to protect the inventory they have left to get more of their money uh, met because of the demand. So it's kind of crazy to see these are going for that. Imagine what's going to happen a year from now. I expect Moxes to settle in around $7,500 for a near minty unlimited. So keep an eye on it. It's amazing. It's amazing that people have this kind of money to put out there on cardboard. I myself have only... I, I, bought, I bought this one. So you see the uh, Moxie here, right? And I paid $2,000, okay, plus tax. But that's what I paid. So at least I know what I paid when I bought it, okay? And that's what I've had to buy in the last numerous years. The, the emerald you see up there uh, was because I, I traded in Toonies. There's another video on that back in the day. You can take a look. Now, our next one, uh, okay, Black Lotuses, which had no sales for a while, are now starting to sell. You see that 20,000, 24,000 for Crispy Unlimiteds? That means all the beat up, horrible copies like mine that are like totally toasted, those are going for like $10,000 now. That is crazy to me that we're seeing beat up copies go for that when near minties are going for 20 to 24. But it just shows that push, that push to raise things up, that inflation we're seeing. I don't know where it's going to end. But we get to enjoy the ride of seeing where it goes. And especially if you didn't buy any of these copies, you can just enjoy watching the market and seeing what happens. And if it falls, you get to laugh at everyone. And if it doesn't fall, you go, ooh, that's too much money. Crazy to see. All right. Number. There we go. Time Twister. Used in Commander. I remember when this card was like nobody wanted it. It was like the weakest of the Power 9. Some people said it shouldn't even be on the list for a while. Um, I myself sold a copy last year. And I didn't get anywhere near this money. I'll tell you that. And mine was... Alpha. So I look at this and go, look at that price range. 8,000, 4,500, 4,500. Again, because it's used in more than just legacy and vintage, this card is being pushed up for a long time because of the commander area. It's crazy to see, but it's going to keep going higher, I think. I can see this pacing as high as high end mocks just because it gets used in more places. Crazy. All right. Time Walk. Now, Amy Weber is the artist who did Time Walk. I think her art is truly amazing. Always loved it. Now, for Amy Weber, you have to understand, these, these pictures of the Time Walk, look at the two at the top. 5,000, 5,000, right? Look at that bottom one. That's Collector Edition. You're telling me Collector Edition is 1,600. I bought a couple of Collector Edition ones for $30. They had the clip corners on the uh, they, you know, they're collector edition, but somebody clipped the corners. I just wanted, I said, they're still a real card. I want them. So I bought a couple for 30, 34, 35 bucks, whatever my eBay thing said. And then I look and I go, look how much they're worth now. Even clip corner ones are going to go for like $800 now. Insane to see that kind of profit on that kind of card. It just shows if you can't get like an unlimited or a beta, people are just driving themselves to go and get collector edition because there's almost nothing for sale anywhere in collector edition. Now, Ancestor was hard to track out. I couldn't find three sales in a row because it's two sales, three sales, and the third sale is always a proxy. So I wanted to cut the proxies out because proxies to me don't count as a real sale for these type of cards. But it shows me the people who can't afford it are buying the proxies. Okay? I don't recommend it. I mean, you can just put a card in and say what it is. But when you, when you are 
getting a real copy of a card that looks like the real thing, I have a problem with that. If you're just going to like put a card in or put a bad photocopy in for your buddies so you can just play, that's cool, man. But there's nothing like owing the real thing, but five, $6,000 for Ancestral is crazy. I still think it's unfair that the Power of Nine, uh, Power of Nine here contains three cards that are blue. Kind of unfair, right? All right, number 10. All right, Library of Alexandria. Now, Library of Alexandria, in case you guys didn't know, I bought one this year. And I paid $1,100. You can see it right there. All right, now that $1,100 has basically tripled in value uh, in the space of this period of time of like 90 days. That is insane to me that it has gone up that level that fast. But again, it's that domino push we're seeing from below to top. It's just pushing everything up. And the sales you see are happening. Okay, some are higher because they're like BGS, but that card's selling for 3000 plus now. And that is just insane to see at this quick of a level. I don't know if that price will hold. I can see it retracing. So if you're looking for that particular card, wait for it to fall a little bit. I think we're going to see it. Now, Brain Geyser, of course, is not one of the power, power high-end cards. But I want to mention it because we talked about this when it was $20. And I told people to buy it. And it's already tripled in value. And people are still buying it daily. There's still 30, 40 sales a day. People are clearing this card out and they're holding on to it. This was also in uh, Rudy's video, how he recommended it as a card. And as soon as he recommends something, you guys see what happens. Um, I think I recommended it first, but still pretty crazy. Now, our last three cards are all going to be dual lands. Now, the fact that we see Underground Sea now hitting twelve dollars to $1,500 for near minty crisp ones tells you even beat up ones are going to hit close to 1000 now. And that's, again... You're just seeing that push and it just keeps going higher. If you bought the dual lands when I told you to, I feel proud because I told you to buy them, uh, especially like the Tiagas and stuff that were still like 200 bucks. If you didn't, I'm sorry you didn't listen to me or I'm sorry you didn't have the money at the time. I get it. If you have them, hold them because these are not coming back to market. Again, when you see this and you see a Volcanic Island, $915, it's not coming back to market. They're holding on to it. You're done. Buy it and the person's putting it away, especially for the near ones. Maybe beat up ones, but not good ones. Tundra, same thing. Look at that, nine hundred to a thousand bucks. Those are BGS ones, but still, fourteen hundred means it's seven to eight hundred, and, and that was February fourth for some moderately played copies and a near mint copy. But when you see that, you realize those prices. It's only going to push higher, and that again, it's going to be quite the ride to watch this happen. And I will be covering it. Don't worry. I think I'm going to stick to Fridays being like the market watch for reserve list stuff because we have other topics to cover and we have some call time openings coming for the patrons and some of the other people on the channel who purchased them. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, so I look forward to seeing you guys on Saturday. Have a great one. Yeah, it's kind of chilly out here in Canada, but I'm looking forward to seeing everyone on Saturday and Sunday. Stay tuned. And hey, always leave comments below. Love to talk to you guys. Have a great one. Stay safe out there. Hey guys, big shout out to my patrons out there, and guess what? Those of you who called and asked and are interested, I am willing to part with six Weatherlight packs to do openings on the channel. You can contact my email if you're interested in buying a pack.